Hey there, this is section 12.4 and 12.5. We are going to talk about volume for prism, cylinder, and then 12.5 we'll talk about volumes for pyramids and cones. We're clumping them together just because their formulas are very similar, so um, we, might, we thought we might as well just kind of put them together and get going with it. So volume is in units cubed. So if you think about an egg, so far we've been talking about the surface area, so just the shell of the egg. So if you would hard boil it, you might um, peel off the shell and eat the inside of that egg. So the shell part is going to be your surface area, which is what um, section 2 and 3 are about. But what fills up that egg is going to be your volume. So um, if you think about making a popsicle, you may have a... Um, little holder that you fill up with the juice or whatever you're making that popsicle with. So that is going to be your volume. What fills it up, what's on the inside, your surface area is what is on the surface. So um, those are some things that we can remember and kind of how we need to think about volume moving forward. So the volume of prisms and cylinders will be in section four. So the volume of a prism, remember prisms have two bases, They are those bases that are congruent are connected with rectangles. Um, your volume is going to be big B times your height. So remember the big B is literally talking about a triangle or a square or a rectangle or a regular polygon. It is talking about a 2D object, so we're going to um, find the base of that and then your height is the distance from base to base. So that is from one base to the next base. That is going to be your height. So it'll be um, on that one of the rectangles. So let's use that formula and see what we can do. Uh, we need to find the volume of a triangular prism. So when, I'm not very good at spelling today. When I name it, I see that the base is a triangle. So I need to find the base of a triangle, which is one half BH. So looking at this triangle, I'm going to pull it out over here. So here is my information I have. So from that triangle, I'm gonna find my big B. So my big B is 1 half, 10 times 12. Um, so that would give me 60 times my H. The distance from triangle to triangle is 25. So my volume is going to be 1,500 centimeters cubed. All right, here is your check your progress. Make sure you show all of your work um, for this to be completed. So what happens if we have a cylinder? That is the exact same formula, just your big B is now going to be pi r squared times your height. So pi r squared will be from that circle. Your height is from circle to circle. Your height is from circle to circle. So... <clears throat> Um, here is my, I'm going to say pi, my radius is 1.8 squared. The only thing I'm going to square is my 1.8. And then times my height from circle to circle, it is 1.8. So I can get my volume to be 5.832 pi centimeters cubed and I would probably just say 18.3 centimeters cubed. All right, turn to the next one. Do your check your progress. Here are your answers for that. Make sure you have all of your information down, all of your work down. Cavalieri's principle just says that if two solids have the same height in the same cross section, remember cross section is when you cut that solid with a plane. So all of these cross sections are going to be 
the same area of the base at every level, then they have the same volume. So um, you may just look at that and say an oblique prism or an oblique um, cone or cylinder or whatever will have the same, you can use the same volume formula to find it, whether it is oblique or it is right. And remember, oblique just means it's kind of slanted to the side. All right, so this is an oblique cylinder, but we can still find the volume the same way we would. Pi, my radius is 15. I'm going to only square 15, and then my height is from circle to circle, and it must be right, so that would be 25. So I can put that in my calculator, only squaring 15. I get 5, 6, 2, 5 pi feet cubed which is approximately 17,671.5 feet cubed. All right, go ahead and stop this video and try your next check your progress. Here is your answer. If you leave it in terms of pi, it is 5,324 pi centimeters cubed. All right, moving on to section five. Now remember, section four was um, prisms and cylinders, so two bases, and that was big B times my height. So if I'm doing pyramids and cones, my, and it can be oblique or right because of Cavalieri's principle, I'm just going to add in this one-third BH. So your base area can be a square, it can be a rectangle, it can be a rhombus, it can be... Um, a regular polygon, it can be a triangle. Um, so I'm going to find the area of that. Which is supposed to be a pentagon, sorry. Um, and then times your height. So remember, your height is from your point perpendicular to your base. It is not the slant height, it is the inside height. So slant height or the surface height is going to be for your surface area. All right, so I have a square pyramid, and all of these pyramids are going to be regular unless you're told otherwise. So I know my big B is a square, so I'm going to take that to be BH. So my square looks like this, and I have three inches as one side. So my base is three, my height is three, it's a square, so my big B is going to be nine. My height is going to be from my vertex perpendicular to my base, so that is 7. So I have my B and I have my H, so I'm going to say 1 third, 9 times 7. So when I solve that out, I would get 21 inches cubed. Now you're wondering maybe why it's 1 third. Well, if you would possibly fill up um, this square pyramid with water and you had the same a square prism or a cube that had the same base area three of these would equal one of your prisms so that would be where you get the one-third at all right go ahead and stop this video and do your check your progress make sure you show all of your work to get this answer don't just put the answer down all right, volume of a cone. So exact same formula notice, but now we're just putting pi r squared times your height. This can be for oblique or right. So one third your big B times your height or one third pi r squared times your height. So notice this from your vertex, it goes perpendicular to your base, but it doesn't go to the center. So this would be considered an oblique um, cone. So just a little side note. So for my volume, I'm going to say one-third pi. My radius is 1.9 or 9.1 squared times my height, which is 25. Again, from my point perpendicular to my base. So if I solve that out, I'm going to get 2168.0 feet cubed. All righty. Let's look at the next one. So notice that 12 is considered your height, 
But what if I had 12 was on my surface height? So let's see if my, um, if this side of my cone was 12. I know that's five. I can do the Pythagorean theorem to find that um, my height itself. So just keep that in mind. Um, that radius and that height is going to create a right triangle and you can always do the Pythagorean theorem with that. So staying with this picture right here, I'm gonna say one third pi times my radius squared times my height. Remember from my point perpendicular to my base when I solve that out, I'm going to get 314.2 inches, and I'm always going to be in cubes. All right, there's two check your progresses right below that. So go ahead and um, complete those two check your progresses, and we can check our answer from there. And there is that. So that completes um, section four and section five. So notice at the bottom of your notes here are all of your formulas for volume, we had a page or we have a page for um, all of our surface area and lateral area, which is from section two and three. So that completes sections four for volume of a prism and a cylinder. Um, and then volume of pyramids and cones was in section five. So um, look forward to seeing you back next time.